Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Nostalgia is a powerful thing. And if you've been around the Linux desktop long enough, you'll know that desktop environments come and go and they change and they iterate and they move on. But there's always a part of me that wonders, why do we move on if things worked so well before? Okay, so there's no real rhyme or reason to this video other than I was poking back through some of the Ubuntu releases that have come out and like the one I'm looking at now, the Ubuntu Unity uh, remix or Unity distribution of Ubuntu uh, that is, uh, that's being developed, it's being actively worked on. And, uh, and all of these attempts like the Ubuntu Unity desktop, Ubuntu Mate, all of these uh, attempts to recapture technologies that have fallen by the wayside, uh, that have become victims of time and progress in favor of newer, flashier desktops. Now, first of all, just for a little bit of uh, background, if you're not familiar with the Unity desktop, it was the, that's an interesting bug. Uh, it was the default desktop environment of the Ubuntu desktop from around 2011 till about 2016 or so. Uh, and 18.04 or 17.10 in 2017, I think, was the first release that returned back to the default GNOME shell, GNOME 3 based uh, desktop environment. Now, if all of that means nothing to you, all, it basically is that uh, for quite a while there, Canonical, the company that owns uh, Ubuntu, was developing their own desktop shell. Now, the plan at that stage was that they were going to use a lot of the technologies that they were baking into at least the initial versions of the Unity desktop environment to uh, later fill in uh, to a mobile space. So they wanted a desktop environment that could morph really well to different screen sizes. Now, thankfully, the Unity desktop does have its own Wikipedia page, as do a lot of open source projects. And uh, you can kind of get a, a bit of an idea as to the convergence that Canonical and the team were looking for. Now, for me personally, I loved the Unity desktop after about the first two or three releases. Once we got to Unity 12, or sorry, Ubuntu 12.04, which came out in 2012, uh, I was on board 100% with what Canonical were doing with Unity. It was a really interesting mix of, uh, they were bringing GTK3 elements, they were bringing Compiz, an antiquated uh, compositor or uh, window manager alongside some cute elements, uh, particularly the menu, the dash, and that kind of stuff. They had some uh, custom indicators that lived up here on the panel, and they had a few other things going on as well. One of the best features that I loved about Ubuntu was the keyboard navigation of that interface. Being able to use the Windows key to bring up the dash and being able to use the Alt key to trigger any commands in the file menus. Now, interestingly enough, I don't think it works in Firefox anymore. Again, it's a victim of time that they can't maintain that extension anymore, but it works in other complicated apps like, uh, like LibreOffice, for example. And being able to quickly trigger the Alt key and get the HUD, heads up display, and I'll be able to type a command that's hidden in the file menus was extremely powerful. The other thing that Unity did very well was it maximized screen real estate for smaller screen types. You gotta remember back in 2011, 2012, the average display size for a lot of ultra portable machines was around the 11 to 13 inches or so. And having a screen that small with screen resolutions being what they were back in the day, every pixel counted, which is why having a dock that was running along the side of your display, as opposed to the top or the bottom, as well as a, uh, a panel that would integrate, a top panel that would integrate the window controls and the menus made an awful lot of sense. In a lot of ways, it was groundbreaking for its time in its effort to uh, be suitable for smaller screens. I love how Tech Republic refers to the Ubuntu Unity desktop here in 
in their review of 16.04. They were saying Ubuntu Unity is not the desktop pariah you once thought it was. This desktop environment has evolved into a beautiful, efficient interface that does not deserve the scorn and derision heaped upon it by so many. And in a lot of ways, that's kind of true about a lot of uh, projects in the open source world. When it first came out, Ubuntu Unity was uh, not universally loved. However, it did grow a fan base over the five or so years that it was uh, in development and taking the lead on the Ubuntu desktop. Now, the good news is, is that since Canonical dropped the Unity shell and focused their developments on other things, the community, like often happens in open source projects, picked up the Unity project, both Unity 7, the desktop shell and Unity 8, which was going to be the next shell, which funnily enough was also going to be the shell that enabled Ubuntu on mobiles, still also in development under the name of Ubi ports. Both of these projects are still alive and kicking to some degree. However, we come to an inflection point in open source development, and that is around the fact that desktop environments and development libraries move forward. With the arrival of GNOME 40 and with the arrival eventually of Qt 5, uh, a lot of the desktop libraries that keep these slightly older desktop environments alive will be under fire. Now, another desktop that we're gonna have a look at in just a moment, Ubuntu Mate, also has similar issues. However, with better development resources behind it and a slightly more flexible approach, uh, they are seeming to be able to deal with the change as it comes along. Uh, the Ubuntu Unity uh, remix of Ubuntu is still very much alive. And I do want to get that out there that if you really hanker for some nostalgic Ubuntu Unity desktop, you can go and get it. You can go to ubuntuunity.org and through the amazing work of one Rudra Saraswat, uh, this project is alive and kicking. And as the last few years have ticked by, uh, that team has has grown and shrunk and grown again of people who want to keep this desktop environment up and running. However, they do have some serious issues that they're going to have to solve in the next few years if Unity is going to survive. So in an effort to try and uh, keep the ball moving forward, uh, there is a project now called Unity X, hosted on GitLab and definitely go and check out the work that they're looking at there. They're just starting work on getting these uh, projects moving forward, rewritten in languages that are more up to date with what current desktop environments and desktop widget sets, development libraries are using. So in conclusion, at least with Ubuntu Unity, a lot of the core functionality is here, but the Indicator menus, for example, don't have nearly the same functionality they once did. The dash and the heads up display menu, while the dash works well, there isn't the availability of lenses that there once was, and the heads up display menu doesn't work with everything. Also, you do get some weird artifacting here where you get GTK header bars uh, being shown twice with the window controls as comp is a very antiquated window manager is having to redraw the window as well as the, the window controls being baked into the header bar itself. So there's some weird uh, glitches like this every now and again that you're likely to come across. Now, on another hand, you have Ubuntu Mate. Now the Ubuntu Mate project has uh, a, a lot of the same issues that they have to solve too in the coming years, but just by looking at their release notes of the last few uh, few releases of Ubuntu Mate, you'll notice that they are tackling those issues head on and some of them do require a little bit of heavy lifting. So let's hop over to the latest Ubuntu 21.04 Hirsut Hippo release of Ubuntu Mate and we'll poke around and see what's going on over there. Okay, so before we jump into the desktop and just poke around for a little bit, I wanna bring your attention to the release notes for Ubuntu Mate 21.04 because it's telling where the development priorities are for this project that is aggressively tackling the outdated libraries and, and chunks that go into the Mate desktop and replacing them with things that are, are current and that are uh, usable into the future. Chief among those is the Ayatana indicators. Uh, like I mentioned, Previously, the Unity desktop and Ubuntu Mate used very similar app indicator technology. That's the stuff that lives up on the panel. Uh, and those are well and truly out of fashion now. And they've switched over to the Ayatana ones. And uh, that seems to be going okay. There are a couple of drawbacks, but for the most part, 
uh, this is a step in the right direction. You'll notice that just some of the flags that they give you straight out of the gate is, hey, by the way, the printer indicator might not work and also they've had to take out Redshift uh, just to keep everything working uh, properly. The good news is though, that they are planning on replacing and, uh, and adding features to the Ayatana indicators to bring back feature parity with uh, their previous versions. Um, also, the look and feel is consistently getting added to to uh, work on the consistency of the look and feel of the Ubuntu desktop across uh, the Mate and stock flavors. Now, what I wanna point out here is just the level of detail that these guys have gone to to keep it looking current, not just on the surface, but deeper down as well. For example, they have support for GTK 2, 3, and 4 dark and light themes. They've gone to the trouble of making sure that LibreOffice behaves itself, that the icon set for the desktop for LibreOffice and others are all there. They've made sure that all of those themes are available in the Snap Store so that Snap packages take on that theming as well. And they've also made sure that all of the elements of the desktop can scale really well for high pixel density displays. And this wasn't even something that original the original GNOME team would have even had to even dream of back when GNOME 2.x was being developed. Again, these are really key quality of life improvements that are being given to the Mate desktop to keep it alive and keep it thriving. Honestly, every time I jump into the Ubuntu Mate desktop, uh, I always get a little bit giddy because it brings me back to the very first experiences that I had with Linux a long time ago. And it, it warms my heart to see the amount of love and care that goes into uh, this project. This project especially, because even though the, the desktop technology that a lot of this was based from is decades old at this point, the amount of attention to detail in updating and maintaining uh, this desktop is pretty darn inspiring. And I don't think it goes without people noticing uh, because the Ubuntu Mate community seems to be in pretty good shape. And while I would imagine the download metrics for Ubuntu Mate compared to the mainline Ubuntu desktop would be a mere drop in the bucket, I think the people that use this desktop really enjoy the extra functionality that it gives them and uh, the fact that it just gets out of the way. It's not pretentious, it's not animated, it's not particularly flashy, but it gives the users what they want. Honestly, the Yaru theming here that has been done with Ubuntu Mate is everything that I wanted from the look and feel of Ubuntu Mate. So I know this video is kind of ending with me kind of gushing over Mate as, uh, as a desktop and Ubuntu Mate specifically, but darn it, let's get excited about the things that, uh, that are going well in the open source world. Why not? I think the GTK world has a very distinct way of moving forward. And I think they seem to have a really good grasp on how to manage that transition from GNOME 3 to GNOME 4 slash 40 and GTK 4. Uh, but it definitely feels like along the way, uh, different desktop environments, GNOME 2 morphed into Mate and Unity, which is morphed into something, I guess, Unity 10 eventually, uh, have fallen along the wayside of mainline development in favor of newer schmexier desktops. But that's not to say there's something special about the functionality that was built with these desktop environments a long time ago. Let me know what you think. Which one of these two would you gravitate towards running? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.